Let's do an off the mat project with our silhouette. Hi, welcome back to my craft room. My name is Kelsey. I also call myself Dinosaur Mama and today we are doing an off the mat project but using Silhouette Studio. If you are looking for the Cricut version of this, I will have them linked down below. I have two previous tutorials on that, but this tutorial is going to work within Silhouette Studio. I had been asked to do one so that you could see how to do it in there. The project I am making is a 29 inch, that's from tail to head over there, <laughs> 29 inch, this is an ender dragon. I made the file really quickly in studio, it's not a perfect file, I just used uh, trace but you'll see that briefly when we go into studio and then I will show you how to set it up for cutting. I will do a bit of the assembly, it was a really long process, I'm not gonna lie. The assembly is like a puzzle, so it took me about an hour to put all the pieces in the proper place. But this is how you would break apart your images so that you can make larger projects. So like I said, this was a 29 inch dragon, um, which I guess you could cut if you had the paper for it and you had a Cameo Pro. I don't have a Cameo Pro and so this technique will work for a Cameo as well as it will work with a portrait. You would just size it down to eight and a half by 11 paper. All right, let's jump into studio. So I'm using this image. It's of an ender dragon. It is not a high quality image. I will say that, but this is what my son wants. So that's what we're going to do. And I'm going to trace this. I am going to up the threshold just a little bit because I want to make sure everything is connected. So I am going to do that and I'm going to hit trace. And so now I have um, the start of my SVG file at least. I'm going to go into node mode. I'm going to highlight over these ones over here and delete those. So I'm going to highlight over everything and I am going to go up here to object and everything's highlighted and I'm going to simplify. And that's just going to give me less nodes. That's what I want. So I have that here and I'm just going to make this a little bit smaller. Okay. So the next thing that I'm going to do, and this might be different than what other people do when they're doing this, but I'm going to change this to black and then I'm going to go up and I'm going to release compound path. So now I have all these different pieces of my dragon. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to color all of these pieces and I will, I will put them into groups. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit select as I'm hitting them and I'm going to do the colors that my son asked me to do. And as I'm doing the colors, I am going to group them. So you can just do command G if you are on a Mac or you can right click. So I'm gonna go ahead and do all of my colors here and come back after. Okay, so here I have all of my colors broken down and as you can see, everything's kind of grouped um, into these smaller groups. So it's not completely by the color, but it's by like what it's near. So these are the, again, these are the colors my son chose. So we're gonna roll with it. Um, and if you're using an image that's already bought, that's fine too. Um, you can break it down uh, just by so like if I wanted to ungroup that I would just ungroup. So now from here we need to break up our back piece. Well, first we need to size it to what we want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to max out my biggest piece. My biggest piece right now is this tail. It's five inches. Everything else is going to be under that. So I'm going to go through and find my biggest piece to make sure and it is that piece and I'm going to max that out to about 11.8. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make this whole thing. Oh, Got to make sure we have everything highlighted. I'm going to make the whole thing bigger. Probably close to 25 inches. So let's just keep, let me zoom out a little here. Okay. And let's check in and see how big this is. So this right now is still 11.4, so we can even go a little bit bigger. And if you want to, you can make it bigger and break it up. I just don't feel like doing that. You would just split it in half um, in the same kind of way that I'm going to show you how to do the back. I'm going to make it a little smaller and just a little bit smaller. And there we go, 11.6. That looks great. So the total size of our image is going to be 26.4 by 16.025. This is a pretty big project. 
As you can see, it does not fit onto a mat. So we are going to put this off to the side. And I want to start with just the back. So I'm going to pull out this black part. This is going to be your piece that you have to break apart. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a rectangle and I'm going to make it make it a little bit less than 12 by 12, honestly. And I'm going to grab it. And you can make it a color if you want so you could see it better. So like if you want to make it pink. And I'm going to cover up my ender dragon as much as I can. So I don't want to have any like weird sections. I want to have things that connect. So I'm going to do here and I'm just going to duplicate this. Here I think would be a good one. Oh, we got to go down just a little bit. And I'm just covering it up. I'm going to duplicate again in all my little parts. So I do kind of, I am kind of annoyed that that isn't covered. So I'm going to move this over and I want these to be touching like if you can snap them. So now I'm going to move this up to here. And so I realized quickly that it was not going to fit if I left these squares the way that they are. So I decided to turn my squares. You can also just turn your image, which is probably what I should have done. <laughs> um, but it ended up working, so it's fine. So I decided to rotate my squares to so that they would fit nicely onto my Ender Dragon and cover everything up where it wasn't crazy. So I actually ended up only using four squares. And when I went to go cut, it actually ended up being only three sheets of black paper, which is awesome. So see, I'm slightly rotating it and I'm just making my Ender Dragon fit. And I'm basically going to cut this into a puzzle. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of maneuver these over. Now I'm just trying to move this over so that everything's covered. And so once I have everything covered like this, I mean, it's very much on the edge of all these, we can go ahead and start slicing. So you want to have your squares. These are representing my paper, my 12 by 12 papers. And now I'm going to go ahead and go into my modify panel right here. And I'm going to grab everything. That's what's great about silhouette. And I'm going to hit divide. And so now I can delete all of this extra pink space on the side here. Let's see what's going on there. Any extra lines you want to delete as well. And oh, not that. So I'm going to zoom in just so I can see. I do have some overlap in some places. So I'm just going to go through like this little piece. I want it to be connected. So I'm going to go back in and I'm just going to weld it back to another piece. So I'm going to grab it, whoop, grab this little piece and weld it. Okay. And I'm going to zoom out and make sure we're still good. Right down here has it as well. And so I'm going to grab this piece and I'm going to weld it to this piece. And I want to just zoom out here and make sure we are all good. So we have the, this piece, this piece, and this piece. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom back out and I'm going to double check. So like this, this piece right here says it's 12 inches, but if I rotate it, I can fit it on a 12 by 12 piece of paper. And you know what's great is I can actually probably fit this on with that 12 by 12 piece of paper as well. I'll be able to fit these two pieces onto here and then I can do these pieces as well. I'll probably have to do these two on separate pieces of paper. So basically what you're going to do is just make your 12 by 12 sheets and then you're going to use divide to split it all up. What's nice about using Silhouette rather than a Cricut is that you can do it all once, lay everything out. You don't have to go through and slice everything individually. And then just go back and weld anything that might have been overlapping. So now everything should fit on a 12 by 12 piece of paper without any issue. Might be snug, but it should be good to go. And now we can start cutting everything out. So what my plan is, is I'm going to go ahead and grab my brown pieces here and I will use Nest and see how it goes. So like I should be able to at least cut these two onto here. And you just wanna move things around and see where you can fit them. So for example, this 
onto here. And if you want to fit more, you can always go in here, ungroup, right? And then we'll be able to place these all around. So you want to really maximize your paper space as much as possible. So I'm going to go ahead and get started on cutting out all of these pieces. And then assembly is really just basically a puzzle. So what I'll do for assembly is I will actually go through and I will have this up here and I will keep it so that I have an idea of where everything goes. So let's go ahead and get started on cutting. I'm going to send to my machine. I'm going to use probably 16, 65 pound cardstock. Um, and like I said before, I'm just going to move pieces onto my, my panel, cut it, and then move on to my next piece. So this is going to take a little bit of time with cutting, um, but let's get started. Here is how my green mat is. A lot of this is broken down and moved around and I'm going to have to puzzle piece this all back together. And it might take me a minute, but it is doable. So there is that. So I'm gonna go ahead and send this the way it is. So like I mentioned, I'm not going to do a ton on assembly here. First, what I did was I flipped over the Ender Dragon after I had set it up and made sure all my puzzle pieces were matching up. And then I just used clear scotch tape to tape this together. I did not go and get like a foam poster board to make this sturdier. The backing ended up being cut out of like an 80 pound con cardstock, so it's pretty thick. And I'm just gluing, gluing, I'm just taping these together with some scotch tape. You can use painter's tape so that the pieces are together. And then it's gonna get secured together once we start overlaying our other pieces of paper. So that's your first part is just building your back and you're going to go off of that. Now what you can't see is off to the side right above the tail is the picture of the Ender Dragon in, in studios so that I know where to piece everything. I'm literally looking at it like it's the puzzle box when you're putting together a jigsaw puzzle and I am just placing on my pieces. So the first thing you want to do is build your backing. You want to build it backwards so that your tape is on the back and you can't see it. So that's your first step. See, here is my outline and we're going to start from there. From that, you see, I just am placing down my pieces. I'm using my Barely Arts glue to place everything down and off camera where you cannot see is going to be my image so that I'm using it as a guide. So I will say that is the most helpful thing. I'm going to show you a little trick that I like to use for my pieces where there's a lot of small pieces. So when I'm doing little groups like on the back, I'm actually using low tack transfer tape to move these over. So I'm, you see I'm peeling it here. I'm going to show you again the full steps. Not again. I guess it's the first time I'm doing it. I'm just putting my low tack transfer tape here. And the less stick, sticky it is, the better. So like if it's used transfer tape, even better. And I'm just going to put this onto my paper. Now this one was a little tacky. It did have some transfer onto it and that's okay for me at least. You know, like I'm saying, you want it to be the least tacky as possible. And I'm just going to put my glue onto the backing and then place it down onto where I need it on my off the mat project. So you're kind of using it like vinyl, but you're using glue instead of it having a tacky backing. And so here you'll see I'm really slowly, gently peeling off the transfer tape and then just using my tweezers to kind of help guide it off. So just be careful when doing this. Don't use super tacky transfer tape, but it is very, very helpful when placing down pieces. And so now going forward, I'm just gonna finish placing everything down. Again, I don't feel like you need to watch the entire hour of me placing pieces down, but if you do feel like you need more of it, please let me know and I'll make a separate video of just the placement um, of it. So I am using my craft glue to place everything down. I'm checking this piece particular because I felt like it was wrong, but it was not. Um, and then some people when they're making their off the mats like to use that like thick styrofoam and they just do an outline of the, you know, the main piece and then cut it out to make it thicker. But mine worked. I think I mentioned that before. So that's really all there is to it when it comes to making an off the mat project. And here is the final off the mat project. It ended up 
being 29 inches long from the head to the tail. And I'm very happy with how it came out, even though my son picked ridiculous colors. Thank you so much for joining me as we made our off the map project. I hope you learned something and enjoyed this. If you learned something from this video and you enjoyed it, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. It helps me so much. Subscribe to my channel for new crafty videos every week and share this with one of your silhouette friends who has been wanting to make off the map projects but doesn't know where to start. I will see you soon in my craft room and stay crafty.